And now it's finally time to introduce pandas data frames, which is probably the most intuitive way of looking at data. It's going to be a tabular, just a tab tabular data structure as you are used to in just regular Excel, for example. So we're going to be using an example similar to this one at the beginning. We need to introduce a couple of technical things and terminology, but this is basically what we will be end up handling in a couple of minutes. This will be a uh, pandas data frame. It's gonna have this form of a table. It's actually very powerful because we will be able to actually squeeze multiple dimensions into it, something we're gonna see in the future. But at the beginning, just for you to have an idea, is just a table. So to get started, we're going to create data frames in multiple different ways. Um, we can use, for example, a dictionary specifying the columns, right, that will be containing the data frame and the values for each one of those columns. Uh, a pandas uh, data frame, sorry, similar to a series will contain a given index. So in this case, the index is shared among all the columns. What you're going to see is that all the columns of a data frame, each one of those columns will act basically as series. So once you select one column, what you will be doing is zooming into the data frame and getting a series and handling a series. So again, data frame, tabular data structure composed of columns and also indexed. In this case, we do have an index. Um, each one of these columns will have a type, as we're going to see in a couple of minutes, um, seconds actually, is what I am setting right here. So I'm setting the type of this um, column to be of type float. I can do that because again, each column is created as a series. So a couple more data frames for you to have an idea, and again, each column in the data frame will have its own uh, type. So if I go within again to this one and I do data frame dot, uh, actually I can run it right here, dot D types. There you go. We have two columns, var1, var2. var1 is of type float because we've actually specified at the moment of creation of that column and var2, it's going to be object. So the important part here is that of course, each different column will have its own type. Moving forward, um, let me actually show you a couple more things. The data frame will also have the concept of both a head and a tail method and the types, right, uh, that we saw before, each column having its own type. Internally, a data frame is also backed again by series and series are backed by um, NumPy arrays. So as you can do with a regular series, you can also access the NumPy, the underlying NumPy array with the values attribute. And again, this is the same thing that happens with a series. Once you have a data frame, there is also a very important or just method we use all the time, which is the info method. That's gonna give you a summary of all the columns you have in your data frame and also the index of the data frame and the types and actually amount of non-null values for that uh, data frame, the same as some memory usage. Um, once you construct your data frame, check out what I'm doing right here. I am creating the data frame with a given index. I'm specifying the index. What we had before, they were all just range index that were assigned um, by pandas automatically. In this case, I am creating the index. So as I say that the element R1 has column one, column two, column three, column four, and these are the values. So that's what I'm doing. And I can, again, get a handle of the index. What's the index? What's the, what are the columns, right? The number of dimensions, shape and size, three things that we also saw with series, which didn't have a lot of, uh, didn't make a lot when we were do using series, but with data frames, it's going to make a little bit more sense, especially because the shape of a data frame is something we will be consulting often. The shape will quickly tell you how many rows you have and how many columns you have. Similarly, we can use the info method as we displayed it before. The index has four entries from R1 to R4. The column one, column two, column three, column four have these number of elements of this type 
and we have a summary of all the types. We have four int64 columns. So again, this is the info method. It's something we use all the time. So once you construct a data frame, you're gonna see a couple of things that are uh, important. First, it's you can't modify indices or columns. Uh, these are gonna fail. But what you can do is just completely change or replace the index. In this case, we can just replace it directly, all the columns on all, all the data frames. We're basically dropping elements here. We're gonna see a couple more things later. So now, we've seen the technical details of, of the data frame. Let's actually put it in action with a more realistic example. In this case, again, we have the group of seven, these countries that I, um, I'm pulling from these given uh, spreadsheets. Something you're gonna see later once we start pulling data from or reading data from multiple sources, you're gonna see that there is actually a function that will let you read an Excel spreadsheet, uh, the same as a, a CSV file, which is very similar. But again, this tabular data structure is a first citizen in Pandas. So let me construct the data frame. I am passing all the values for all the columns. And what I'm doing here is also hard coding the names of the columns so I have them in the correct order. Remember, Python dictionaries are an ordered data structure. So I need, if I want any particular order, I must pass the columns parameter. And this, uh, let me see why it's, there you go. This is the data frame that I have just constructed. And as you can see, it looks pretty much in the same way as with the spreadsheet. We have a list of the countries, um, the columns, and that is it. Now, we can do a little bit of an exploration here. Let me copy info here. We're gonna do info first. We see that we have um, these columns with seven non-null values for each one of them. We have the type, we have float, integer, and object, and we have a summary. We have two columns that are a float, two columns that are an integer, and one column that is an object slash string. So continent is the object column. And again, we have a little bit more um, idea of what's going on here. We have the number of dimensions. The number of dimensions is obviously two, vertical and horizontal. Um, but then the shape, it's going to give you the number of rows and columns. We have seven rows by uh, five columns, population, GDP, surface area, HDI, and continent, five columns. That's what it tells you right here. Um, the size of the um, whole data frame. Uh, info describe also works with data frames. This is important. So the same describe method we use with series now works with data frames. So it will give you summary statistic of all the numeric columns. Please uh, note that in the describe run that I have right here, continent is not shown because continent is an object, is of object type, is basically a string. There is no summary statistic that you can run on a string. So only the numeric columns will appear on the describe. Get a type counts, so you get a summary of the types, all the columns and the index of these given data frames. Um, so let's actually uh, see a little bit of the columns, how to, how to modify them. We have a given column that is population. And as we saw at the beginning, let's actually do it again, df.info. We see right here that population is of type float. You can always change the type of columns we saw with, uh, with series with the ask type method. This column, I am doing just a selection of this column right there. This column is internally just a series. So what I can do is just convert it all to a string. Setting a new column in a data frame will be as simple as doing the set process as we know with series, for example. So setting a whole new column is just, in this case, you say, I wanna add this new rounded population column, which is the result of transforming population and turning it into an integer. So running that column, that line, sorry, we have now a rounded population um, column. Um, changing the index, the columns, sorry, will also be simple as we're going to see. And also changing the index. So we had original 
originally an automatically assigned index zero to six. What we can do right here is just uh, setting it to our custom index. And now this looks a lot like the spreadsheet we have before each country corresponding to their given columns right there. There are a couple more details here. I don't want to get into them. Just resetting the index, setting a new index is, is fairly simple. You can do it. You can set actually the index to whatever you want. Usually if you read the data, you haven't read the index, you can set it uh, programmatically later. Um, the focus of the following videos will be selecting data, selecting column, making changes and operations in data frames, which it's going to resemble a lot the regular series. But again, data frames is something we use all the time. So it's going to be very important.